All right, David here with Yoga for DNA, and I am here with Kale Balazer, who is an Ayurvedic practitioner. I've known Kale for over 20 years, and she has some mad skills in the Ayurvedic department. So we're going from summer to fall, and which means our diet should change, correct? Yes, some changes, diet and other things. So what, what should I be on the lookout for? So when I go from hot dogs and hamburgers, what's more like a winter pizza for winter? Is that better? Uh, yeah, going heavier, doing foods that are more grounded. <laughs> Whatever ground you, Dave, is all, all good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, anyway, it's so good to be here with you, Dave. It's uh, always fun to be with you. Yeah. And um, let's see. So you're asking what should you be eating? Right yeah, now. traditional Ayurvedic. What what's the there's a protocol? I know there's a protocol and yeah, yeah. So I mean, Ayurveda looks really at bringing us into balance with our own true nature, our own state of balance and strength, and and then also balance with nature. So that's pretty much the best we can do to take care of ourselves. So as we come into the fall, now you and I are in different climates. So I mean, it's still hot as heck there, right? It it's summer now it's less summer okay so you're feeling like your transitions just aren't as strong like here in the pacific northwest it's raining it's blustery yeah. we're really in that fall transition yeah. so you know we're this transition between summer and winter is really a time one you want to um we've accumulated at the end of summer all this excess heat in the body so I know as a as a Kundalini yogi, you were talking about we're supposed to eat um, watermelon, right? I was like, no, yeah. no, no, summer. But actually, it is a transitional food because watermelon helps you to release excess heat from the summer, which is what we want want to do. And the other things that are present, like yesterday, I just literally went on a walk around my block. I came back with a big bag of apples and pears and beets and kale. I stopped by a farm stand on the way. Oh, very jealous. Really, what yeah, I know. So what nature's producing right now is naturally what our body needs as an antidote for the season. Huh. Okay. So really the best we could do is look at what's naturally being produced where you live. And and that's not that's not always possible depending on where where we are. So but um well but, here the citrus is coming, so Yes, no. Well, I'm in Phoenix, not Yeah, yeah, different. what's what's um what's abundant there right now? Well, I think well I don't know if it's well the citrus is coming. It comes soon. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. know what the, I actually don't know. I'd have to look yeah, that up. Yeah, it's good. It's good to start looking. So that's kind of the beginning of um just noticing how we're connected to nature and what nature is producing for us to heal our bodies to bring ourselves into a state of balance, both physically and mentally. And um, so one thing is pomegranate. So it brings that Ooh, okay, good... right now. So that is really a superfood at this time of year for mm. releasing that excess heat and stabilizing, you know, helping to detoxify our blood. And, um, you know, in the summer, our organs of, of pitta, which is fire, so our liver, our gallbladder, all that can get kind of heated up. So we want to do, so the spring, the fall cleanse, which will be starting here in a week, a couple weeks, is the idea is to help bring all the accumulation of maybe heat or toxins that have kind of built up over the last season, bring them all to the GI tract and help us to eliminate them. So Anyway, I digress, but back to food. <laughs> so one thing, I, I, I guess the thing you can look at is um, what are the qualities present in the environment and how do we bring balance to them? So if we look at fall, what are some qualities just to kind of, what's a quality getting more present in your body that you've noticed or, I know I'm, now I'm, oh wait, you're supposed to be asking all the questions, right, Dave? No, you can no, you can turn the table. <laughs> well, it's a it's a little bit cooler in the morning, which is nice. Uh huh. So yeah, so it's it's cooler, and you might also notice. I mean, here for sure, it's like getting even though the rains are coming, it's getting drier. Like our skin is hmm. getting drier. Oh yeah, dry. 
kind of like all those fires, right? Like the summer heat dried everything out and then the winds of fall start blowing and it can create kind of the dryness in the land, fires. It can also create that in the body. And then the cold winds start coming. So that cold can also seep in. So we get dry, we get cold. We maybe feel a little lighter, like the wind's blowing, leaves are starting to drop. So we might feel that energy in our body feeling a little less grounded. So we want to bring in the opposite qualities. So instead of eating, we want to eat foods that are more oily. So getting good fats in our diet. So one that Ayurveda loves is ghee. Do you, do you eat ghee? I don't even know what it is. Wow, that's awesome. So ghee is an amazing um, food that's used in Ayurveda, both externally and internally. It's clarified butter. So you're actually taking butter and you're cooking it, getting all the um, milk out of it. So it's just a fat. So you get all the milk solids out, so it becomes this really amazing liquidy gold, kind of smells like popcorn when you're cooking it, and, um, and it helps with inflammation. It helps actually feed our gut, our good mm-hmm. gut bacteria, and um, it helps lubricate your joints and tissues. So really important to start bringing good healthy fats like that, like olive oil is really good at this time of year. Um, so dry, light, so we can start eating foods that are more grounding, right? What's getting produced is all the squash, um, root vegetables, beets are coming out. Again, another detoxifier for the liver. I like uh, beets. Yeah, yeah, so many ways we can eat beets. So all these things to kind of stabilize and ground our body and nourish, because we want to really start nourishing and hydrating the system before winter. If we, if, we, if we get too dry, not only do we start feeling dry, but our internal skin of our GI tract and also our sinuses start to get dry. Yeah. And that's when kind of the allergies and the colds and everything can take root in the system. So another important thing of fall is to stay really hydrated. And best to drink warm water and warm teas throughout the day to just keep your keep your energy good to help your digestion because digestion can get a little weaker too around the fall. Like it kind of that fire gets blown out from that long summer. So we need to really stoke our digestive fire. I think the yogis are going to want to know about our yogi tea, which I drink all year. Is that Tell me about yogi tea. Yogi tea's got a lot of ginger in it, cardamom, black pepper, cinnamon, cloves. I don't yeah. put I don't I don't put any tea in it, but I drink this all year. Okay, well, so, it's, it's perfect for uh, for fall and winter, absolutely. When it's kind of, and you might want to think about um, doing something in the summer because it's so hot there that's going to be more cooling. Doing, you know, things like mint mint teas are really cooling, or things that are going to help your body sweat. So that that will actually help you sweat. But um, I am right now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check back in the winter and see if you've cooled off a little. <laughs> I, I will. I also like to do a castor oil pack on my liver sometimes, too. Yeah. Yeah, that can be really good. We actually, something I bring in a lot for people when they're cleansing and detoxifying, for sure. So I, I do just want to share, because we talked about food, but I do want to share about some, maybe just a couple other tips people can bring in to transition into fall that's going to help. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many beautiful lifestyle practices that we can use that would actually benefit yogis. It was designed for yogis as self-massage. Do you ever do that, Dave? Yes, I do. You do? What do you? Of course. It's awesome. part of the practice knees your face your thought yeah that's part that's yeah part of our practice your whole body and if you get like warm oils and put that on there's different oils that can be so if you have a more I, yeah. yeah almond oil i have with like a scrub scrub everything down under the lymphs uh-huh lymphatic okay. system cold showers cold bath yeah well we might have a differing degree you know ideas about that but 
<laughs> or maybe in the transition, like right now, it, what's it's considered a sandhi, it's a transition. So it's when um, when imbalances can kind of come in, when we can get thrown off emotionally, physically. So it's a time to be really gentle. So maybe that shocking cold bath wouldn't be that gentle or shower. So maybe just doing warm for now. <laughs> so, yeah. But I but I know Kundalini is a little it has some extreme qualities to it. Dishnan yeah. is our hydrotherapy. Uh huh. The cold. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to interview you sometime too. <laughs> and and then the other thing, um, you know, which I know you do in Kundalini yoga is a lot of breath practice. Mm hmm. Right. So super important right now as we transition to just help our mental and so much going on in the world. Right. So just all this movement of fall, um, really good to stabilize our minds and our bodies. So yep. I know you do breath of fire, which is right. A lot of breath of fire. I, I, we do some of that in some of the Kriyas. There's breath of fire uh, and different meditations. You know, you can just do regular breathing. Actually, I just did a meditation where, where you just take four fingers and you, all you do is just sit in a restful posture and you just feel your pulse and just breathe regularly for 11 minutes. Nice. That's so, so and so. You, you can tell you're getting more and more present because you don't, like I'll start off, I won't feel anything. And then I'll feel maybe one finger, then two. And as you get deeper and deeper, you, you know, you start to feel everything. I love that. I love that. I'd love to learn more from you, Dave. And then uh, for strengthening your immune system, you, well, I mean, there's lots, but the one that's popular, you block off the right nostril. You can just sit and, you know, put your left hand in Gyan Mudra mm -hmm. and just breath of fire through your left nostril. <laughs> uh-huh. But but not after breakfast, right? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you best, best not to eat too much before. So I'll, I'll usually, yeah, well, I, I don't, I eat fish occasional rarely but yeah. you don't want to eat too much anyway before meditation or yoga yeah because yeah. you'll won't be happy <laughs> you all do um brahmari breath do you know that one brahmari no it's bee humming breath so that can be a really great one if you're feeling you know if you're feeling kind of everything going on in the world or just feeling this transition and and needing to calm the mind so I'll just share with you really quick. So it's in right. through the nose. And then exhaling with the humming. Mm. Not holding your breath, just whenever at your own pace. And then pausing at the bottom, inhale. And if you notice, what happens is it lengthens your exhalation, which really helps to release excess heat, calm the mind, and just helps you kind of ground in. So you'll have to, yeah. Did you cooling, notice? You can, cooling, you can also breathe through. A... Yeah, nice. You can curl your tongue, too. <laughs> well, Dave, I know you were cutting me off earlier, so I don't want to take too long. And, oh, uh, I. As long as you want, <laughs> we 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 can always uh, come back. Yeah, it's so good to be with you. And I do yeah. want I want to share, Dave, to anyone that's listening, just that I'm going to be doing a fall cleanse. Yes, and how do we how do we get up? Uh, that's how do we find that? Yeah. How do we find you online? Um, you can go to um, AyurvedaSeattle.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Life and Balance with Kale. Perfect. And I will put that in the video when I edit. So. Okay. It's not like the vegetable, but it's K-A-E-L. Kale. Like the superfood. Yeah. Although kale's really good this time of year, right? Still in our gardens. 
It's like it's like salad with hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, not, there's not that many kale jokes. I'm not not a kale the person, kale the kale the salad. No, all right. I tried. All right. Thanks, Dave. Satnam. All right, Satnam. <laughs> bye bye.